Hey folks, I want to do a quick little video of an unboxing of some miniatures I just got from Antimatter Games. So it's been a little while since I've gotten some stuff there. Um, I've got a lot of their stuff, um, but some of the new Kickstarter stuff that came out, plus some models that I've really been wanting. So I got them here and I thought I'd just show you kind of like uh, what they look like when they're coming out of the packages, as well as um, after I get these guys assembled or some of them assembled, I'll get, uh, I'll get them... Um, shown assembled but the first thing is I kind of wanted to show you what I got here so I saw this guy in the Kickstarter and um, I really want this guy for my Dark Mariner so I got Gothaga um, the uh, Elder Ethereal uh, for the Dark Mariner so he's he's pretty bad news so I'm pretty excited about him so I got him um, and I'll show you some of his parts later I also got um, <clears throat> this guy so this guy um, was sculpted by a fan of the game. His name is Bart, and you can find him on the um, the Abyssal Realms uh, Facebook page. And uh, I thought it was really awesome that they incorporated uh, this. Uh, Bart made a um, passion project out of sculpting a couple different things, and uh, this was one of them. And it made the cut uh, for Antimatter Games to make into the into the game itself. So I think that's really pretty darn awesome, you know, from a um, uh, community perspective that something made it into the game for that so I wanted to get him and so I've been pretty low on wild sea creatures so I got a couple of uh, of these whaler sharks gray whaler sharks um, the prince turned out fantastic and I also got this snake man warrior I really like these guys for shadow sea um, a pretty awesome miniature so got a couple of them so let's start with Gothaga here um, this guy came in several parts so I'll open this up um, the, the quality of the, I don't know if this is a, um, I think this is a, uh, I don't think this is a, uh, print. I think this is a, um, uh, from a mold, but, um, the parts on this guy, I don't know if this is coming through on the camera, particularly, uh, high res or not. Let's see if we can make that a little bit clearer. Um, but the parts on this are really quite exceptional. Um, and I haven't fully tried to get this thing put together, but I can see that this thing's put together a little bit like this. Um, and they're probably going to be a little bit of mold, a little bit of, um, gap fill with the molds there, but this guy's in multiple parts and you've got a whole thing of tentacles here, a whole thing of tentacles here that you can, um, that you can put on him. And then, um, I'm not 100% sure what this is, but I'll take a look at the pictures of the miniatures and we'll figure out how to put that thing on there. Uh, and he comes on a 50 millimeter base, so can't wait to get him put together. Here's the, um, oh, what do we call this guy? The orthocone, I want to say? There it is. The, um, orthocone, yeah. So this is the one that was um, sculpted by a fan on the Abyssal Realm. So there's his shell and, and his face and his head plate. <clears throat> one of the things that I love about uh, antimatter game stuff is that they've got all these really beautiful scenic bases. And this one's no exception. That's a great looking base. Um, well done. And then obviously there's a ton of tentacles for this guy. Um, I'll figure out how to put that guy together. But he's all kind of go on there like that. Wild sea creature. A big one. Uh, for your undersea game, so that's great. I can't wait to put him together. <clears throat> and then um, the next thing I got was this, these whaler sharks. And I haven't actually opened this one at all, um, but this is pretty amazing. These guys are all single piece miniatures. Now, I think these are resin prints, but I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure they are. Uh, but these guys came out pretty great. A little bit of cleanup to do there, but that's no big deal. That that, that sort of tells me that those are resin prints. Um, you know, scaffolding around the fins and whatnot. So I think that's what those are. But these are fun little sharks. Um, pink up as wild sea creatures. So those are great. And then I've got this Stygian snake man. Let's take him out. Take a look at some of the pieces. <clears throat> Sorry folks, I'm fighting a little bit of a cold here. 
Um, but yeah, he looks great. <clears throat> yeah, again, really good quality like we'd expect from antimatter. Um, two pieces, he'll go in like that. And then, you know, again, scenic base. Very cool. And then a shield on his other arm. I'll just pop right in. Yeah. Pop right in like that. Yeah. That's going to be great. So, yeah, those are some of the pieces that I got. Um, I'm going to come back after I, particularly, I want to get Gothaga um, <clears throat> painted up soon for reasons which I will explain soon. Uh, but I want to get him painted up. So, but once I get him assembled, I'll show you what he looks like when he's all put together. All right, we're back, and I've put this guy together, and I've green stuffed all the the gaps. Don't don't let the the amount of green stuff on there surprise you. I, I get a little aggressive with the green stuff because I like to kind of sculpt over it. But uh, very little gaps. But this guy's all put together now, um, and is a fantastic model. I love it. Look at all the pseudopods and all the tentacles and whatnot. And just a really great looking sculpt on this guy. I cannot wait to get some paint on him. But uh, he's really he's pretty stable. Um, he's got a lot of dy dynamicism in him, uh, lots of motion with the tentacles and whatnot. And I, I think I finally figured out, I think that's like little ether magic tendrils kind of coming off his back. So I'll do some sort of blending, but, uh, I'm going to try to re replicate the paint scheme, um, that we saw on the card, kind of like this pale fleshy look with, you know, kind of reddish, almost kind of like, um, sort of tender or bruised skin, but belt pale and fleshy. And then the sort of these milky black eyes um, just make him look really nasty. But yeah, great job, AMG. Um, love this model. Can't wait to get some paint on him. Okay, so today here on the painting table, we've got Gothaga, the elder ethereal monster from uh, Antimatter Games. This is from the Deep Wars line. This is a uh, ethereal demon that the dark mariners can summon i just love this model we just had a quick shoot on the uh the pieces and the assembly and the gap filling i've primed him and uh, we're all ready to start painting this guy so i really want to give this guy like this kind of pale sickly fleshy look and so we're going to start with a fleshy look and we're going to kind of highlight that up to kind of a, like a zombie white flesh and then we're going to wash it with some um some kind of this um, deep red, sort of a thinned deep red wash, and then we'll give him a milky kind of black, lifeless eye, uh, and then whatnot. But uh, we're gonna do some airbrushing on this guy first, and so I, I think we're gonna do some purple. This I think this is like uh, this is like wisps of ethereal energy as he's kind of coming out of incorporeal existence and into the physical world. So we'll paint that maybe with some purples. Uh, you know, some fleshy melting into purple like he's kind of coming out of the void or something. So anyways, we'll, uh, we're will we going to get some paint on this guy. So I'm going to go ahead and start by mixing up some paint for my airbrush. I'm going to start with Cadian Flesh Tone. And I'm going to thin that down with quite a bit of white, um, Vallejo White, uh, white air. I use Game Air because the game colors um, are tougher. They uh, don't flake or chip as easily. So we're going to start. We're going to get some Cadian flesh tone in there. And this is going to be a very pale flesh color. So we're going to start by putting some flesh, flesh tone in there. And we're going to cover the whole model with this flesh tone. So I've got my little uh, dropper bottle here. Get, the, get some paint in there. It's just my airbrush. Um, Pump it away, so we'll put that in there. Get some flesh tone in there. Don't worry, we're going to thin that up quite a bit. Um, I'm going to put some white in there. I don't know exactly how much, just some. I want to thin that out a little bit, or uh, lighten that up quite a bit. Again, we're looking for a really kind of nasty, fleshy, look to this. So I think that's, it might not be as light as I want it to be, but um, we'll get a little bit more white in there. And then we're going to thin that. And this is just going to be the base color of the ethereal for all of the flesh. 
which is frankly almost all the model, honestly. So we need a, a reasonably good amount in there. So get that all good and mixed up. Kind of a nice, nasty, peachy flesh color to base him with. So then I'm going to use some airbrush flow improver. Give myself a few drops of that. And then I'll put in a little bit of 70-30 uh, isopropyl alcohol. Let's get that to a nice finish consistency, almost like milk. It's maybe a little thick. And this is a lot of paint. I don't think I'm going to need nearly that much, but that's okay. I'd rather have too much than too little. Yeah. That looks good. So get that all kind of mixed up. All right. And I'll get my handy dandy airbrush. Left some water there from last time. Let's try that again. All right, get my paint pot filled up. Let's see what I've got good flow. Let's just base cut this whole thing. We're going to use some of the black primer to help us with shading. Like I won't fully coat the underside with this flesh tone. You'll see what I mean here in a moment. But let's just get a nice solid. It might take two coats of this. We'll see. Let's get a good solid coat. Check out all the highlights. All the things that the, that the sun were above it. It's a big model, so it might take a little while.
try to do it everywhere, but again, on the undersides of things, I'm not going to give it quite such a heavy coating. I'm going to let that primer act as a little bit of a shader. And I see what I mean as I get more through this, but I'm not going to necessarily be super aggressive with the underside of the model. I still see some of that black primer showing through the flesh tone. Now it's kind of giving an illusion of shade. There's so much good relief on this model. I'm pretty excited for how it's going to accept the sample highlight that I put on afterwards. I notice I'm going to reserve some of this uh, shade that I made. I'm going to use that as a base for a sample highlight. I don't want to go pure white on that sample. I'm going to be close to white. I'm not going to go pure white. I want to keep. I don't want those highlights to be too dramatic. But it gives it that cheesy sort of over airbrushed look that I'm, I'm not, I personally am not fond of. It's not a fun thing. I mean, you might like that style and if that's cool. If that's what you like, then that's what you like, and that's cool. Um, it's not really a fun of that style, personally. I'm going to turn this here. I'm going to keep going again. A lot of model to cover, a lot of nooks and crannies on this guy. He's not 100% open up through. And the stone base fits okay. We got, we got time and we got the um, two things we need. Then, uh, this is the first video I've done like this in the airbrushing and everything, so I'm hoping the video comes out, so I actually don't know how things are looking when you take a quick look at yeah, I think you can see that. I think you can see that. But if not, uh, I guess I'll know in post, huh? I'm going to get some of this that's turning into the uh, kind of paper, too, because I want to do a little blend on that. Nasty. This thing's a ethereal hole. I mean, uh, I'm not expecting sunshine and rain for this guy. Very different in the finished product, so it's sometimes a little bit hard to see while you're doing it. I'm going to get here just a little bit. I don't want the color transitions to be too stark. I want to shop like Looking back on doing motion sensor, I should walk back and forth more with them. Let the shop light know that I'm still here. Sometimes it goes out. It's a lot of fun. So still. Alright. Well, that's, you know, that's not half bad. We got some decent tones in there. You can see on the underneath how I've left a lot of that black on there. Um, that's pretty intentional. I think it's made with a little dark. Maybe lighten that up just a shade, but not too much. I want, I want to use that black to my advantage. It's there, and I can use it. It's good stuff, but I don't want to, I don't want to kill all that. Alright. I think it's a good progress here. Uh, 
Alright. I was feeling pretty good about that. Okay, so that's a pretty decent base flesh shape. So I'm going to set this guy down for a minute. Set him down for just a moment. And you know what? We used almost all of that flesh shape. So good on us. And you know what? We're not going to need much more than what's in that pot. For the Xenophil highlight. So I'm feeling good about that. I'm going to do a quick clean of my tools here. Get that paint out of my airbrush. Earlier, folks, I don't know what happened to the airbrush there. I had to readjust the uh, way the needle was seat, seated in there. I never had to do that before. But, um, that's all good. No harm, no foul. It's back in fighting shape. And you need to go to work with me. Which I appreciate this airbrush. I don't have this airbrush. Maybe a year? In use. I had it a year sitting on my bench. Afraid to use it. Um, and uh, I haven't used it up until now. Just get it extra clean. I don't always clean it that much between colors, but for some reason I felt compelled to on this color. And bear with me. Yeah, we just got it. That's fine. We're almost there. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take, take that flesh color I made. I'm going to dilute what's left of it. I'm going to dilute it down with a little bit more white. And I'm not going to use a whole lot of paint here. I'm just going to use enough to give a zenithal highlight to what I've already got. And you'll see what I mean. It's like lights coming down from the top of the miniature. And it's kind of giving a, a raised highlight to everything you see there. My shop is still a mess, please bear with me. I actually, it's better than it was like a couple weeks ago, but I still have a lot of cleaning to do. So, okay. That's, uh, that's pretty good. I don't think I need it much lighter than it. Maybe it, maybe a skosh lighter than that. And we're, I don't want to waste too much paint here because we're not going to use a tremendous amount of this. And then, we're going to do a very thin highlight on top of that with uh, Pilot Witch Flesh, but let's do this first. Let's do a generous Xenophon with this. And then we'll do a much more Reserved to set up a little pouch which flesh. So with this, we're just going to have it come over and hit the top edges of the miniature. I'm not going to go crazy. This is not a base cut. We're just going to hit highlight areas. We're going to get some highlight on that miniature. Just a highlight. Over top that mouth, put a left tentacle there. Move the face a little bit. 
so that when you do a wash, you can tell that there's some highlighting going on. Remove that, remove that. Get some generous highlighting, beautiful highlighting on the beastie. So you can see, you can start to get some texture in the areas where the light might be hitting it a little bit more strongly. You can still see some of that base coat underneath it. That looks pretty good. Get some more highlight there. That looks pretty good there. You can kind of see where underneath the highlights there's some of that deeper flesh tone. That's good. We're going to keep that. And now we're going to take this and we're going to clean up our brush again. And now we're going to mix a really pale, nasty white. And we're really going to be careful not to overdo this next white. This is going to be the final highlight. So some background on the brushing. Clean it out. Particularly with whites, um, I find that they get dry tip on my airbrush faster than other colors. That's probably something to do with the titanium content of the paint or something, but I find I have to do a little bit extra cleaning. So if you're wondering why I'm doing so much cleaning between um, colors, that might be why. Alright, so now... I'm going to take Pallid Witch Flesh. Hopefully you can see that. Next up is Pallid Witch Flesh. I'm going to give that a good shake. <coughs> yeah, that's good. And I don't need too much of this. And that's pretty white. Um, there's no real flesh tone in that that we were using before, the Cadian flesh tone. So I'm going to take that. And we're just going to thin this down. Put some airbrush flow improver in there. A couple drops of that. Maybe a hit of 70% ethanol. Or <laughs> I guess 30% ethanol. I, I thin that down pretty, pretty decently. Alright, that's pretty light. That's going to come off as a very uh, good highlight. I don't think it's going to be too overpowering with the flesh tones that we've got, but let's give it a whirl, see what happens. Alright, again, not needing too much paint here. Get my brush. Going. Get a little bit of extra white. You kind of see a little bit of that white showing up. That's good. I don't want it to be too strong. And you kind of come in. And get some of these highlights by going like this. Let's come in. Okay. 
come here and hit this hand. This one's a little harder to see, but I'm okay with that because I don't want it to go too crazy over the top. Let me use the mouth a little bit. Okay. I feel pretty good about that. So the next thing we're going to do is we can just touch. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to apply the wash. So let's come back and do that. Okay, before I do a full sale or full a wholesale wash of the miniature, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do an underspray of some purple. And so I really like the Daler Rowney inks um, and they're very strong, so I'm gonna dilute this quite a bit. But I'm gonna do a couple drops of Daler Rowney um, Purple Lake. It's a beautiful purple, very strong. Um, I'm gonna dilute that quite a bit. In fact, you're going to be shocked at how much I dilute this. It's going to be very dilute. And I'm just going to use this as an underspray to kind of get the bottom of the miniature kind of more purpley, dark. So it's very surprisingly thin. But that's going to be a good thing. Trust me. Um, so let's get a little bit of that underspray of purple on that beast. Let's see what happens. Let's see if I can get you to see what's going on here. So I'm really just going to kind of come in. I'm going to be careful. I'll try not to hit some of those tentacles. And I'm going to come in here and try to get some of the underside of the beast and get some purple. That's going to really help the color palette a lot when I start doing the washes. I'm going to kind of put in here, get some color in there, so you can already kind of see how that's going to be a little bit um, I want to say like tortured flesh. I'm not doing like full nurgle here, but I do want it to look like beautiful ripped ripped from the ethereal plane you get maybe a little bit of purple in there as well um let me in here a little bit let me see some of that for me right now and then just kind of get in here a little bit get some of that tortured flesh and it's going a little bit appreciate that bottom maybe even on the tentacles too a tiny touch bit and Get in there, do some work. Okay, I feel good about that. Alright, I'm going to come back and we're going to do some of the Charbert Crimson washes. Let's get this out of here. making sure I'm still on camera. I've never done this before. So I'm just kind of making sure everything's still working.
turn that noisemaker off for just a little while. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I really like this for kind of fleshy nastiness, take a little bit of charbroiled crimson, crimson, and we're going to wash the entire model with this. It's going to be a very thin coat, and we're going to dilute it with a little bit of Lamian medium. Um, I really like these, and um, GW inks are very strong, uh, and I do tend to water or thin them down a bit. So we're going to put that much. That actually might even be a little bit too much, but we'll see. We're going to do, probably end up doing two washes. I want to see what it looks like, but I'm going to dilute this like two to one. You can see that I'm being very precise there, right? Yeah, that might even be, still be a little bit too thin, or too thick, or too strong. I'm going to put some flow improver in there. See what happens. Hopefully that makes things flow a little smoother. Let's do a little test run to see how thick this is, or see how strong that color is. I don't want it to be too strong. I'm going to take any old brush, kind of get in there. Hmm, I'm looking at that, that actually might not be too bad. Yeah, it might be a little, still a little bit too strong. Let's thin that down a bit. Let's just go for it. This beast is going to look nasty no matter what, so we're just going to go for it. I'm going to cover the entire miniature with this now. The entire miniature. And, okay, yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I'll show you another little technique I use to make sure that the raised parts don't look don't get too saturated with the color of the wash I've got it on there relatively heavy it's pooling a little bit more than I want it to but that's okay it's still fluid I can still work it and we're gonna just keep coming in here with the brush I love all the relief and the detail on the tentacles that's fantastic it's one of the things that really drew me to this miniature it's like this thing looks gnarly and I love it all right we're gonna keep working this wash all over the miniature now you know as you might notice like okay that's been drying for a little bit I can come back and wash off my brush a little bit and I can Take a clean brush and wipe away some of that excess, maybe. And that's a good way to kind of keep excess of color pooling, especially like on tips of tentacles and such. That's a technique I kind of started perfecting on my Dark Mariners. Like, look, I want the tentacles to be blue, but I don't want the tips to be blue. But I can come back over it with a white paint on brush, but I could also just let the let the wash settle on the miniature for a bit and then come back and remove the excess where I want to after it's kind of starts setting up and that's a good little way to sort of make sure if you've got areas of the miniature that you don't want as heavily covered you can pull that you can pull that shade right off so this gets a little bit interesting because when if the wash starts pooling you've got to work a little bit more quickly I'm okay with that we'll just keep working this thing my light went out again I wish it just could stay on maybe I need to take that timer off yeah I'm feeling like this is gonna this is gonna do that thing justice I feel 
And after this wash, we're not done done. We're gonna we're gonna do some other things to make sure that this color is where we want. Because if I look at it right now, it might be a little bit more crimson than I want it to be. But we got tools to change the way this looks, so I'm not too worried about it. I just want to make sure that I get nice, good, even coverage in all the recesses and the cracks and the crannies of this glorious little beast. I keep going here. All over. And I like the GW shades. Uh, particularly for that reason because they don't crack or break when you kind of got them like they're starting to dry if you take some other washes sometimes you can kind of see well okay well somebody hit the brush like the continuity of the shade breaks if you try to come back over it um not so in my experience i mean at a certain point with these washes yes of course they're going to break and what i mean by break is they um you can see a line where there was paint and you wiped it off. <coughs> um, it's not too bad with these shades. I'm just going to keep going. Okay, we're getting to a point where I'm going to want to start doing this. A reclamation of the color on some of the tentacles. This guy's got a lot of tentacles. Oh, almost done <clears throat> getting the flesh on this guy. Getting there anyways. Make sure you hit everything because there's a lot of twists and turns in there. It'd be real easy to miss a spot. Gotta get everywhere in there. You see how we did that pre-shading? How that area is a little bit darker? That's exactly what I wanted. <clears throat> now, the thing that I want different on this, and it's not a problem because there's another step here, but I don't want these tentacles to look quite so... Kind of crimsony purpley, but that's okay. I got a plan for that. Okay, I think 
Oh, I found a spot. Make sure everything's covered. You can kind of already see this now, like the, the fleshy, tortured, fleshy look. Ugh, it's so gross. I love it. See, I don't know if you could see that, but that's where you could see where some of the shade was drying. And I wiped it and it sort of broke. But I can recover it. And it looks just fine. So let me do another quick pass here. Make sure that <clears throat> all the surfaces are covered. Oops, I didn't get his chin. How did I forget that? I'm working through a cold here, folks. You might sense the snorkeling and the sniffling and the coughing and the hacking. Bear with me. <clears throat> okay. Pretty confident all of the surfaces oh, <laughs> spoke too soon. Pretty confident all the surfaces have been hit now. Now, this is that technique I was talking about. I'm going to take my brush and I'm just going to kind of drag the drag the shade off. Drag the shade off. And then wipe it on until drag the shade off. Wipe it on a towel. That way, you can kind of get rid of some of that excess. You still get the hue. But if there's areas on the miniature that you don't want quite as brightly or as deeply shaded, you can use this technique and pull the shade off. Occasionally wash your brush. Pull that shade off. It'll still leave a little bit in the recesses there for you. <clears throat> but you can see... How? Hopefully you can see. I don't know if it's clear on the video. I guess we'll find out soon. Oh yeah, I see. Some of that stuff is pooling off. Get that off. Get out. Get that off of there. We don't want that. <clears throat> Thank you, Shade. We love you, but we don't love you that much. That's a good example of just gonna take some of that shade and pull it off. Take some of that shade and pull it off. Like there's an example of like you don't want that relief to be not shaded, but you don't necessarily want it shaded quite as deeply as it was. And then as a final <coughs> piece. What we're probably going to do, depending on how this kind of dries off, we'll come back over it with the airbrush just very faintly and get some kind of re retouch the highlights there. But you see how you get that transition between the deeper flesh shades and the lighter, lighter flesh shades? Oh, I'm super excited how this guy turns out. And we might need to come back as well later on. Like we we should we might want more shade in that area right there. We can come back afterwards. Not a problem. Let's get that shade off the tips of the tentacles. Just a little bit more. Because that's how I want it. Now if you don't like that tentacle, or if you want the tentacles shaded all the way, you do you boo. This is just what I'm doing. You do what you want to do. Your Guthaga, your nasty flesh tone. Okay, we're getting there. We're getting there. I really like how that's turning out. I feel like we could have more shade in there, but I'm not going to worry about that now because it'll probably pool off and go somewhere I don't want it to. So I can be patient there. There's a little too much shade in there. Let's take care of that. Looking good, looking good. Yeah, 
here's a good example of just pulling that shade off. I want that pseudopod to be a little lighter than the shape was allowing it to be. <clears throat> okay. Well, I wonder if I missed that area. Can I come back over that? I'm sorry. I feel like I missed that spot. It looks like I missed that spot. Okay, I'm going to come back in here a little bit. This should be the color of the, I don't know, ethereal force or whatever. It's probably going to be a purpley, maybe green, I'm not sure. Maybe a purpley green. Alright. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's let that dry. At this point, um, we're just pushing peas around a plate. Let's see a little area that I want cleaned up. So sometimes you're going to see this like, look, this area didn't get some even shading on it. You can always come back. Give them a little once over. Call it good. Alright, so let's let this guy dry a little bit and we'll come back and see what we need to do next. Okay, now that the wash is completely dried, you can see it's dried on there now, um, and I think it looks great. Um, I added a little bit of purple into the mouth there, that's probably why that looks wet. Uh, but now what I'm going to do is, that looks pretty good, but what I want to do now is take some of that highlight color. Now I've already mixed it up, it's mostly um, the Pallid Witch Flesh. And then just the tiniest bit of the Cadian flesh tone to kind of make it um, blend in with the flesh tones that I put. I want to kind of come back over the tips of the tentacles and at the highest points and just airbrush in a little bit of highlight back in there just to sort of clean up some of where that wash might have um, pulled the color down into the reds a little too much and so now I want to bring it back just the highlights with the airbrush and so we're going to come back and we're going to do that make sure we get some flow there just on the highlights the tips of those tentacles kind of clean things up a little bit should help this to make this look real good and where I need to I can kind of use it at an angle just to make sure that I don't get in the relief of the tentacles too much I don't want to lose that and we work real hard to get that tentacle relief to look really good with that wash I'm just going to come in here just a little bit and clean up the tips of those tentacles. Trying to leave what was there in the recesses a little bit. And we can also do some highlights where we need to. Do a little bit of highlight on the face. Again, just going to come in. Tips of the tentacles. Clean that up just a touch. Alright, not too much more to do there. Um, that kind of looks weird. I just forgot to do Mr. Alright, that's looking pretty good. Um, you'll notice in some spots, like right there, we've got a little bit of extra shade. So I might come in with a brush, but let me see if I can do a little bit of work here with the hair brush. I don't want to go too crazy there. I think I'm going to try that with the brush to kind of clean that up a little bit. Um, but I think that looks pretty good. What do you think? Next up, what I want to do is I want to start getting some color on that mist that's coming off of him. So we're going to clean up my airbrush. And we're, I'm going to make that kind of a dark blue, blackish 
like a fade from a kind of a creepy greeny blue to a dark blue to a black but to a gray overtones. Kind of like it's coming out of the mist. He's dematerializing or materializing out of the ethereal plane. Kind of give it a little bit of a ghostly appearance. So patience as I uh, get my airbrush clean here. Put my model right here. Put this guy cleaned up. So that wash turned out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. So if you don't have an airbrush, you could probably do this with wet blending or, you know, just, you know, your basic colors and a wash. You might not get the same subtle gradients, but that's okay. You don't have to do that. It's just me wanting it to look a certain way. And just being confident with the airbrush. I, uh, like I said, I think I said earlier, I bought this airbrush like a year ago or a year before I started using it. I just sat on my bench because like, I was intimidated by it. Well, I don't want to break it. I've heard so many horror stories about breaking your airbrush and it not working and just being a nightmare. And I took a class um, and it demystified airbrushes dramatically for me. And so I was like, no more fear of the airbrush. It's, it's my friend now. We've been through a few battles together now. Um, I took um, a class by CK Studios. And uh, if you have a chance, I highly highly recommend um, the kid and the cat are fantastic. It's worth every single penny. I took it not knowing a single thing about an airbrush. Demystified the whole thing. So if they're in your area, look them up or reach out to them and try to get something set up for your area. I'm sure they'd be happy to do a class. Um, but if you're at all interested, I highly recommend them. So I'm going to go into my palette of colors now. Some of the colors I'm thinking about using are Drakenhof Nightshade. Uh, let's see what else we've got over here. Celia Green Shade. Definitely want to use those two. Um, and then some Nuln Oil. Maybe some De La Rowney, um Payne's Gray. That's a great black. Um, but first, what I'm thinking... I want to get some color on there um, so that we can see that gradient. So I'm going to airbrush that a base color of white. So we actually get to see this great blend that we're going to do, kind of dematerializing into the mortal realm. And hopefully that'll look super cool. So bear with me, I'm going to get some white here. Um, I like the Vallejo Game Air white uh, it's pretty tough sprays pretty smooth um, again it's been my experience that white tends to clog my airbrush faster than other colors I'm not really 100% sure why it does that but I've kind of learned to cope with it I mix this up nice thin consistency all right Let's get these colors out of the way for now. We're going to start with white. Just because I want to have a nice, solid, bright base so that the colors on this can really pop. And really all I'm going to do is I'm going to create a gradient along all of this area. Solid white out here and fade to whatever color is on the miniature here so that it really looks like um, a gas that's materializing. So just bear with me as I kind of get the color on there. I'm going to try to leave some of that shade on there from the black. I'm not going to get too overly prescriptive about getting the thing 100% covered. I'm not too worried about it. I do want it to look like 
the flesh is materializing from the cloud. So leaving some of the color behind. Oh, see what I did there? I got a little bit of color on there. I'm going to wipe that off. It happens. Especially when you don't mask. Um, I'm not really interested in masking this. I'm not super worried about it. I'm going to get that color kind of as a gradient down there. Like he's emerging from the mist. It's all going to be black in the end. I want to get a nice gradient on there so it looks like they're going to have a nice cool effect. Kind of materializing in that mist. not to get it on the tentacles and I'm so painstakingly painting and it's like I want to leave a little bit of that previous color behind because then it's really going to look like it's coming out of the shadows and like not only is it coming out of the shadows but it's materializing from the cloud like it's become it's becoming real out of the cloud Again, this is all going to get covered up, but I want there to be a nice little gradient between the colors that were there and the colors that are going to be there. Alright, so get a nice little gradient there and clean my brush. For later, in case I need it for something. So this is 90% ethanol, and 30% of that is 70% water. It's just a good mix to kind of clean out the gunk. So the first color I'm going to use in this gradient is going to be, not that one, Celia, uh, uh, Celia, I think I'm pronouncing that right, Celia Green Shade. So this is kind of like a ghostly green sort of thing. I think this is going to look pretty darn awesome coming off the model itself. And then this will blend, you go from Celia to Drakenhof to melon oil for the black. Again, I might use Payne's Gray. I haven't fully decided that yet. Um, but let's start with the um, Sealy Green Shade. I'll pop a little bit of this in there. Wait, that's melon oil. Oops. Almost messed up the entire process. Here. Pour a little bit 
little bit of that in there. A little bit of flow improver. Sometimes that gets a little goopy. And you'll see that I'm not being 100% particular with my ratios here. And I'm not super worried about it. Get that to a a good, relatively thin consistency. Right. So I'm not looking to get like really solid coverage. I just want to mist the beginning piece here with the cilia, and then with Drakenhof, and then with black on the end. So uh, I want to let that dry a little bit more. That white seems to be. Uh, not 100% dry, so I want to make sure that that gets dried um, before I continue, so we'll be back. While we're waiting for that white to dry, maybe we can kind of come in here and clean up some of the areas where the tentacles are. So I've got some white and I've got that spray that I uh, made to kind of come back and clean up some of those highlights. So. Let's do that real quick. I come back. Real thin paint. Let's see if we can kind of clean up those edges. Yeah, that's pretty white. I think we're going to go with that kind of flesh color that I made. I might have to augment this, but just kind of come in here. Clean that up just a little bit. That's really a rough transition. So sadly, I'm not sure how this happened, but I was not able to record the um, the first spray of the the mist color. But basically, I already sprayed that. It was not recording, so I apologize. Uh, confirming that it's recording now, right? Yep, we're recording. Yay! So the first layer of color that I want to have is Celia Camo Shade. So that's going to be kind of the ethereal. The flesh is turning into the mist. The next color that I want to do after that is going to be Dragonhoff Nightshade. We're going to do that as a second layer. And then Gnome Oil is the third, like the smoke and the black at the, at the end. So really the idea here is that we're going to do levels of gradient. So the first level is going to be the flesh to the Celia, then the Celia to the Dragonhoff Nightshade, and then the Dragonhoff Nightshade to pure black. So it's going to be like he's ethereal, he's, de he's materializing from uh, whatever realm this guy comes from, but we're going to do... Uh, our next layer of color here um, with the Dragonhoff Nightshade. So we've got the Celia on there. We've got a nice gradient and that seems to turn out well. Um, so I'm going to mix up a little bit of Dragonhoff. I'm going to use the same formula I did before with the Celia. Unfortunately, you didn't see that because I didn't record it. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit. So we did the Celia. We're going to set that aside. Uh, Dracken off Nightshade. We're going to take a little bit of this. And I'm not going to be too precise in my mixing formula here, but a little bit of Drakenhoff. That's actually probably even too much. A um, little bit of Drakenhoff. And then a little bit of uh, Flow Improver. And then just a little bit of Lamian Medium. I'm not going to be super precise here, folks. Just a bloop. We're going to mix that up. It'll have some nice flow. Up to the airbrush. And I'm going to use the same technique with this layer as I did before. I'm just not going to go quite as far forward on the beastie. A little color coming out. It's going to be a little darker, and that's good. So we're going to do this. It's not going to take a lot. Don't need to spend too much time 
getting it too dark because I don't want it to be too dark. I want there to be a flow between the colors. That looks good. I'm going to get all the way to the end there because I want these colors to merge at the end. So, a little bit of green to the blue, and now I'm going to come in after with the null oil. I'm going to let that dry because it's starting to pool a little bit, but that's okay. Let that dry, and we'll come back with the final shade. Actually, one of the things I like to do while inks are drying, I like to keep things moving forward. So, I will start doing some other things like painting the base, painting the eyes, things like that, while that dries. Make sure that things are still recording. That's good. water in there. That's it. Turn off the noisemaker. Alright, so for the base I'm going to use Mechanicus Standard Gray. There's a tile floor. We're just going to paint that tile floor. Okay, we're back. Um, that wash is largely dried at this point, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over it with uh, Gnome Oil and just a couple drops. I'm going to go straight Gnome Oil, but with just with a couple drops of the air Airbrush Flow Improver. So we're going to drop that in the, in the airbrush. Um, and we're going to, again, we wanted the Celia Green Shade to go to about there, the Blue to go to about there, and I want the black to kind of take over, and I might use some black paint, a drop of black paint just at the very end, and spray that on the very tip there, just to make sure that we've got it completely black. But at this point, we're just going to come in with the null oil, get a good gradient on there, coming in. That's now kind of black smoke. Get the gradient going with the ink. And I'm definitely going to come in here. I'm going to drop a black paint on top there. But get the gradient first. I think we're there. We'll let that dry a little bit and then we'll come back and we'll finish up that um, with some black paint so that it looks very nice and uh, nice gradient between the three colors there for the ethereal effect. While I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm going to take this opportunity to go in there and start painting the eyeballs um, a base color black. I want the eyes to be black and then I'm going to do this kind of this milky white with maybe a bit of um, gloss coat coverage of the eyes. But right now I want to get the base coat of the eyes. I'm just going to come in here with a brush. I'm going to start doing the brush work now. Even though I'm going, to, I'm going to come back on that. Back of that. Um, smoke. In a moment when all that wash dries. I'm just going to come in here. Get the base coat. Of that eye. And you know this is maybe. As I see this. This is maybe that turning point I talked about. Like when I start seeing the eyes show up the way they do, that's super creepy. And it's really making this thing kind of come to life, at least for me. So we're going to come in here and get each one of those eyes. Oops. Oops. Sometimes we mess up. That's okay. Come in here. Wash that out. Oops. Yep, yeah, that happens. Oh well. Kind of try to come in here. Get that eye. Get 
There's quite a few eyeballs on this thing. I'm going to have to pay attention to what I'm doing. There's one. Some of these details are pretty small. I apologize, I don't have my camera set up to probably truly capture what I'm doing here, but I'll give you a look see when I'm done. I'm also noticing there's a, there's a few spots there that aren't shaded correctly. I'm going to come in here and just spot treat those. Put a little bit of green shade. And that's all right. That's all right. It doesn't have to be perfectly covered. I also don't want there to be like visual inconsistencies. Yeah, that looks good. Back to my eyeball painting. might have to go over these with a second coat just to make sure there's a nice solid coat there you can see in that big eye on the bottom there I didn't have quite enough to cover the underlying flesh tone Looking nasty. I'm trying to see if there's any other eyeballs. Like, there's got to be. Maybe I got them. Well, I didn't get that eyeball particularly well. Let's revisit that one. Much better. Oh, there's some eyeballs. Is that an eyeball too? Ooh. Might be. One. 
And the black I'm using is actually um, the airbrush black, the Vallejo Game Black. Um, sometimes when I do this detailing, and I've got the right color, I'll use an airbrush color because it's already nice and thin and I can get really good control with it. Um, so that's another little trick of the trade that I've learned. Um, sometimes I don't use my airbrush on airbrush colors. Maybe that's a shocking revelation. You know what? That looks like an eyeball to me, so I'm just going to make it an eyeball because I want it to be an eyeball because that makes me happy. Oh, there's a little weirdo eyeballs on this. Okay. Oh man, this guy is a weirdo. I love it. I think... Oh, there's an eyeball in there, I think. A fun little game of find the eyeball. Didn't get this guy very particularly perfectly. I've evolved my painting quite a bit. Like when I was a when I was a younger man, um, I kind of strived for perfection, um, and my thinking has evolved quite a bit. Like I'm striving for good enough. It doesn't have, there's an eyeball, geez, how could I miss that? It doesn't have to be perfect, it just gotta look good. In particular, let's make it look good for the tabletop. It'll be alright, I promise. Okay, I think that's pretty good for now. Um, we're still waiting for that wash to dry in the back, but there's the guy. In all of his glory his glory yucky eyeballs so now while we're still waiting for some of this wash here to dry I think what I'm gonna do is gonna start working on those teeth so we're gonna base color those white and again this is fine detail work again sometimes I use airbrush paint um, Let's see if that's thick enough. I don't know if that's going to be thick enough for what I want. Yeah, that's actually going to be just fine, I think. So I'm going to go through here. And trust me, this is not the last wash I'm going to do on these, or the last color I'm going to do on these guys, obviously. He needs a very nasty maw. He's obviously an ethereal elder god. Nastified creature. We cannot have pearly whites on this guy. He's got to look like he just, uh, he's never been to the dentist. So we'll just get a base color of white on here. And we'll come back. I got a good formula for nasty teeth. Excuse me. We'll be right back. Alright. Get all these nasty little teeth. And if you don't, if you get it in some of the recesses, don't worry too much because we're going to come over this with a wash. We just want to make sure that we get the pearly white part. 
because the rest of it is going to get washed into the recesses and look nice and super nasty. good there might need to do a little bit of additional layers there to make sure we got a nice solid color um, not the only fangs this thing has right so let's come over here these are some obvious big ones Kids, kids, quiet. Okay, that's looking good. Oh, we got a maw over here and we got a maw there. A maw there and a maw there. Okay. There's lots of little details to get through. So this night model is actually not too crazy on the details, which is fine, but I've had to paint models with a lot more details than this. But this one's certainly on the lower end of little tiny details that you have to paint. Which is good. Get to that finished product sooner. all right let's come over here this is drying up that's nice so i'm gonna hit it again just make sure we got a nice solid coat maybe find some areas that we missed Okay, we'll I'll finish up these details and uh, we'll come back. Okay, so enough of the washes dry on the back there. I feel good about it. This isn't going to take too much effort. So now we're just going to do that last kind of coat of black. A little bit of paint in there to kind of make it a little bit more opaque. And we're going to get that on the back. Uh, I kind of like how some of the smoke is... Um, poking through, where some of the other lighter colors is poking through, so I don't want to 100% get rid of that, but I definitely want to darken this whole thing up on the back ten here. That's what we're going to do. Let's see. Focus from the airbrush here. That's looking pretty good. Yeah. That's what I want. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry, but that's really what we're looking for, is that kind of 
gradient. I think that looks really good back there too with the, the tortured flesh and kind of the transition. So we'll let that dry. I got most of the uh, eyeballs and the, uh, the teeth. So I think next up I'm going to wash those teeth with a little um, GW Reichland Flesh Shade. That should really kind of bring out the nasty. And after I do that, I will do a uh, wash with, um, I believe it's Seraphim Sepia from Games Workshop as well. But uh, I need to go look at the bottle. I think that's the one. It's more of the, the Reichland Flesh Shade is a little bit more of a red brown. And the Seraphim Sepia is more yellow. And that's what we're looking for. Kind of a nasty yellow maw. So I think at this point, I think we're done with the airbrush. So let me do a final rinse of this. And we can turn this thing off. Okay, so I just spent some time putting some Reichlin Flesh Shade on all of the parts that I uh, painted white for the fangs and claws and whatever you want to call them. So uh, we're going to let that dry. We're going to come back. I haven't decided if I need to touch them up with white so that when I do the uh, Seraphim Sepia that they'll really pop. But uh, we'll see what that looks like when it dries. But this guy's really starting to come together. And there you have it, folks. Here is my painted Gothaga, the Elder Ethereal God. Um, I really had a lot of fun painting this guy up. It's a fairly straightforward paint scheme. So um, prime black, do light flesh tones, and then highlight those light flesh tones, then wash with sort of a, um, a, you know, a reddish fleshy color. Uh, got some purple in the recesses there to kind of make it a little bit tortured and the smoke him kind of appearing through the ethereum on the back there was like a really fun uh, thing base coat with white and then start with kind of a, a blue green celia camo shade from uh, games workshop uh, blending up into a black kind of a gray smoky black to kind of see him um, bursting through uh, into reality uh, from the darkness. Um, you know, paint the paint the teeth white with some kind of browny yellow um, wash and do some touch up highlights with the edges there to kind of make them pop. And you know, the black the black black eyes. Um, and so just kind of looking at this guy and look, um, having a lot of fun with painting him. I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, sorry for some of my uh, pretty shoddy camera work. This is the first time I've tried uh, to do a, a recording of a paint session. I think in the future I'll do a down overhead camera uh, to kind of show what I'm doing because I know he's not always in frame. So thanks for your patience on that. And hopefully that was kind of fun to watch, maybe something to hobby to uh, while you guys are putting together your forces for Deep Wars or Shadow Sea. And um, let me know if you like this, if you'd like to see more of these sorts of things. I'm happy to do these these types of videos. And uh, here are all the finished pictures kind of from multiple angles to kind of give you an idea what he looks like. Well, thanks again for watching and uh, we'll see you next time.